that labor is a human form and not just a factor uh, and that politics is about preserving the human status of human beings against very bad impersonal forces so it takes a it takes a while to shift ideology what we're living through is a profound ideological change and labor has to really embrace that a greater role for the state in the economy the decisive role of the working class in deciding elections and the elevation of the abandoned places to decent places to live those are the things he's got to move towards and i see small steps but certainly blairism is not the answer mm. have labor lost the heart of the party well i don't think we should forget 2019 where our very heartlands um, were decimated uh, and that's related to brexit so there's a, a huge job to actually reconnect and articulate a positive vision and before that, there were some uh, former Labour supporters or Labour supporters who said that they didn't want to vote for Labour because they felt they were soft on immigration. That wasn't all the heart of, of the party, but that, that was some of those people. What do you think has happened to them? Well, it wasn't just soft on immigration. It was a general sense of abandonment mm. throughout the new Labour period of the interests of labor itself of, of working people and the places that they live so there's got to be a political economy and economic vision that actually renews the labor heartlands we'll talk about the economy in just a second i'm interested to hear that keir starmer um uh, lord glassman is planning to quote tony blair in his speech today is he right do you think to embrace tony blair's legacy um no is the is is the short answer i mean a new labor embraced wholeheartedly three things that turned out to be false. Uh, the first was the positive aspects of globalization, um, the absolute embrace of finance and capital as the driver in the city of London as the driver of the economy, and the idea that there was a fundamental change and working people didn't matter. And those three things have all turned out to be false and lie at the heart of the problem. Mm. Has Keir Starmer done anything to address any of those issues in, in your view? Um, yeah, I mean, he's 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 moved into what you could say a, a more sensible position uh, compared to Blair and compared to Corbyn, certainly. Um, but he hasn't yet really articulated the positive impact of Brexit and how Labour can actually renew our, our democracy and renew our country within the framework of sovereignty. And why do you think he hasn't done that? Do you think he's un unconvinced? He feels uh, some discomfort at being positive about Brexit? Well, as we can see with the government, which has now um, reverted entirely to Thatcherism, having flirted with levelling up, having flirted with using the state as a positive force in the renewal of the economy. Um, after roughly 1992, Labour embraced a very uncritical attitude to globalisation, forgot the basic tenets of its political economy, which is that labor is a human form and not just a factor. Uh, and that politics is about preserving the human status of human beings against very bad impersonal forces. So it takes a it takes a while to shift ideology. What we're living through is a profound ideological change. And Labour has to really embrace that. A mm -hmm. greater role for the state in the economy, the decisive role of the working class in deciding elections. And the elevation of the abandoned places to decent places to live. Those are the things he's got to move towards. And I see small steps, but certainly Blairism is not the answer. Mm. What about uh, Keir Starmer's stance over strikes? Oh, well, you know, that's just silly. I mean, strikes are a very important part of getting rich people to recognise that, you know, it's human beings that work in places. And if they ignore that and ignore that, you've got to remind them that we depend on them. Mm. But so it's Keir Starmer, whenever, whenever uh, Keir Starmer or, or other uh, Labour MPs, most of them, in fact, have been asked, they've said, well, um, we support their argument, but we don't support the strikes because we want uh, services to run. Um, what do you think of that position? Well, occasionally you've got to be reminded that services don't just run, they depend on human beings to do them. And I've got to say that the RMT has organised superbly around this strike, which have actually generated strong public support. So this is part of the change. Um, I want to ask you about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Labour's economic plans. Where do you stand on these tax cuts that are, that are, are exercising uh, people and indeed the stock market? I mean, it, it's just 
what what's happened is a complete abandonment of the manifesto and position on which the conservatives won the last election the tax cuts are just part of it they essentially believe in magic that if you cut taxes you know the economy will grow and that sort of thing without looking at the fundamental problems in the economy um which is that it's much too biased towards rich people but the argument, of course, you will know, you, you, we've just heard it actually um, uh, articulated by Julian Jessup, is that, you know, whether you like it or not, ri the rich people, if you give them tax cuts, then they are more likely to invest in terms of businesses and, and we want well, growth. Well, we're just back to the 20s and the arguments about Keynesianism. You know, ultimately, you need a very strong redistribution so that people act, poor people actually have some money to spend. His argument was completely ridiculous that only rich people spend money. Well, that's true if only rich people have money. Mm. But if you redistribute to the poor, then they do spend. And I think Keynes won that argument. Do you think that Keir Starmer can win in 2024? It's absolutely possible. Um, but only really at the moment, because the Conservatives are completely disintegrating, both politically and ideologically. But in order to definitely win, he has to articulate a positive vision for the country. Mm.